he does not actually think it's cool. If anything, the lieutenant feels sorry for the poor box. He's leaning in to inspect the layers of graffito that deface it. I'm gonna say nothing of it. Fuck you, guy. The lieutenant pats the box on the head ever so slightly before walking away. Well, I'm sure glad I kicked kick that mailbox. Freaking... Is this is this his truck or whatever? Where you stand a motor carriage, the bodywork is covered in blue and white livery bearing the number 57. Yes, it is. What the hell is up with this car, though? That is some... It's like a horse-driven carriage that's been turned into combustion engine-based technology. Hey, what up, Neff? How are ya? How are you? Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. Logic. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. The copper skin kinema motor carriage. Open the door. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Uh, better pick up the radio, because we need to find out where our badge is, right? Frequency tab, tableau, and lights up and green button labeled prime line goes like a feline eye. And then you hear something. <laughs> Soft pair of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Um. Come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker. Copy. This is Officer. At least. Uh, oh, wait. Sorry. I, I thought that was new. Is this game good? It's weird. It's interesting. It's very dialogue and reading heavy, though. But it's got a very interesting, amusing sense of style. Um, I need you to connect me to civilian Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Of course, what is her number, officer? Uh, Kim, didn't Gart give you the, the number? Yes, hold on. The lieutenant takes a look at his nose and blah, 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 blah. Received. Hold on, officer. Start slapping a marching rhythm on your thighs. Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. I, I, I probably shouldn't do stuff like that because if I fucking lower my health. Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. Takes a bit to get on the phone. Officer, she finally returns. I have Sylvie on the line for you. Yes, hello. A female greets you through static. Through static. It sounds like she's a million miles away from here. Um. Hello, this is the police calling. I have some questions for you about your last day at work. Last days at work. Oh, right. She recognizes your voice almost immediately. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? Empathy. You cannot... You can hear resentment in her tone. She's not thrilled to be talking to you again. Hey, as long as she's not pregnant, we're fine, okay? <laughs> Have you seen my gun? <laughs> Please, no, not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. She sounds beyond exasperated. I showed you my gun? When did it happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating, and she stops hesitantly, not sure if she should continue. And what? What did I do? I want to know. What did I do to win you over with my gun? You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It got pretty graphic. <laughs> Drama. Oh, those again. I've been trying to wean you off them. 
Off of what? You know, when you put your gun, your actual gun, on your temple and pretend to shoot your brains out? Off of that. People don't like that. Ah, people don't know what they like. <laughs> hmm, I remember this. You were screaming things like, My brains are all over the walls, painting them red. I won't be saying it, because these are my brains. I can't see without my brains. Very nice visuals there. <laughs> see now, that's a sense of humor. Some poor sod was trying to eat his pudding while you were screaming, spit flying, imitating the mercy shot right next to him. Spat some in his food. I don't think he touched it after. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, I should have totally killed myself. No, please, no more suicide threats. They're not threats, they're jokes. There's a difference. I don't know what the difference is, but there's a difference. Thank God you don't have that stupid gun anymore. Right? We need to know where it is. I, maybe. There are way more intuitive ways than a gun to leave this world. Okay, I don't know what to say. Me neither. So, what happened to my gun? No idea. All I know is next you were waving around money instead, saying things like big bucks cannot lie. <laughs> And guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. It almost looks looked like you pawned it, but believe me, I did not ask. She sighs. Why'd you quit your job? You mean, why did I leave the bar? You can hear her tense up on the other side. Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing with you, sir. She's being, she's being an obstruction of justice right now. Why not? Why aren't... Why aren't you comfortable discussing it with me? I, uh... Let's just say I left I, because I needed to get away from someone. Who? You know whom. Was it me? Did you not find my sense of humor to be to your satisfaction? You think you hear a sil sliver of accusation in her words? Did you mean because of Gart? You just gotta blame anybody else. What? She stops abruptly. No, why would you even think that? You tell me he asked you out. Are you saying it didn't happen? Please don't bring Gart into this. It's none of your business. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. Was it you who called the police? No, not me. But why didn't you call? No, okay. Do you know who made that call? No, sorry, I don't. She clears her throat. Not, not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the union's phone or the one on the coast. Hmm. So the union has a phone and there's one further down the coast. Got it. It was someone else. The lieutenant makes a note. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Okay, next question. I ain't got enough of that. I think I got everything I need. Oh. Hmm. I do hope so. Please don't call me again. Bye. She's ready to hang up. Let's see if I can pull this check off. It's 83%. That's pretty good. Wait, why does she seem angry with you? Why would she ever be angry with me? Yes, you have obviously done something to upset her at the whirling rags where she was still working. Wait, before you go, you're mad at me, right? Tell me what I... What did I do? What did I do? Was it... Was it, was it because I tried to shoot myself? I don't remember anything. I'm not mad. It's just... The static sighs again. You were so drunk and so emotional all the time. And then the Skua thing happened. That just made me want to quit. What Skua thing? The stuffed bird. Oh! The great school, you threw it against the wall while screaming, fuck that bird, and laughing like a maniac. That, that sounds like exactly what we would have done. Just like that stupid fucking mailbox that hit, hurt my toe. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. That sounds like me, alright? 
<laughs> well, Black Bruce says, if you ever become depressed, try drinking a gallon of beer before going to sleep. That'll give you a reason to get up in the morning. That'll give you a reason to get up several times throughout the night before it even reaches morning. It didn't even have to be a gallon. I just, like, drink, like, a six-pack, and it's just like, yep, not getting much sleep. I gotta keep going bathroom. Didn't seem like you had fun doing it, though. So you're telling me that I was the one who made you quit? Yes, obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen. And I have seen so many assholes in this place. But baby, I can change. I've had sailors fighting, union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. But you... Go on. Well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. Even about little things, like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs that you kept listening on repeat. No more. I hate it now. Hold on. What song? We go on by the ooh. She sighs. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. Sorry about the song. I'm sorry, baby. To hell with that song. Come on. Just give it another chance. It's a good song. The... Then there was your room, your project. An experiment to see how bad it can get in there. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand I had no idea what you meant and I don't want to know. And then you screamed something about how you accidentally a real cool guy. You know, how you are actually a really cool guy and no one understands it. One of the coolest guys there is. The coolest guy in Jamrock. Something about disco, too. Sounds intense. Yeah. It's, my chat tends to usually be pretty uh, quiet. And then I had to deal with your toilet. The one you clogged with police documents causing water downstairs in the kitchen. I won't even mention you were waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke. <laughs> Threatening to see karaoke. I like that. Threatening to kill yourself. Wait, police documents. I, uh, the one I had to wrench out of your toilet. What happened to them? I, damn it, I don't remember what I did to your damn papers. I don't remember every little thing I do. Resentment gives way to concern in her voice. Especially when there's a hurricane and it's just your fault for losing them, not mine. Yeah, but you have them. Give them to me. Inland Empire, something in you wants to immediately forget about this. As if there was a reason you threw them away. Hmm. Okay, I get it. It wasn't a very good tenant. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. <sighs> I was just trying to show you the world of tomorrow, the great panic at the end. God, I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just try not to call me again. Let's pretend it never happened. Uh, what else did I sing besides the ooh? I'm looking for a song. Oh, all sorts of things. Some disco rock too. So much disco and rock. Maybe you can help me identify this one particular song. Oh, this might help us do the karaoke thing. <laughs> Which one would that be? The one that, one that was really sad. Like a sad boy song. Give me that. Sad. I think the one you mean is the smallest church in St. Sad something or other. Butchered that right up. Her voice carries a tone of disappointment. Interesting. You still have to find it, however. Fuck. Okay, so at least we know name. It's the smallest church in St. something. When I spoke to Garrett, it seemed like he thought you left because of him. Wait, really? No, this is absolutely not true. I like Gert. Gert. I don't know what the hell to call him. I'll just say Gart. I really do. I like Gart. I really do. Didn't he cross the line when he asked you out? No, I was actually flattered. I've always liked him. It was just bad timing with the corpse and all that. As a pause, you can almost see her on the other side. The telephone cord coiled around her index. I didn't know what to say to him later. And then you came and destroyed the place, so I left without explaining. I should have told him, maybe. I, I, I can tell him. Okay, but please don't mess it up. 
Alright, we messed it up. Come on. I got this. Please don't take out your gun or something. Right, right, right. Thank you for talking. Gotta go. You can hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio, wordless. The call breaks on the already familiar ways. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Uh, probably. Okay, could you connect me to the 41st precinct? I have something I need to report. Just a second, officer. She puts you on hold. The static crackling softly like a bon like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His ra rattly voice is oddly familiar. 10-2, 10, 10 5, just the 41st come in. Over. Holy fuck, that, like the Crypt Keeper. Scrawny old man sits on a dust. Oh, this is East Spirit de Corpse. Yeah, there's so many different skills. Like, like All the purple ones, though, by the way, seem like Psyche are all really fucking useful and seemingly all the intellect ones as well because I'm seeing a lot of these I don't know what I want to spend my I, let's level something up let's 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 level up island em empire blah because why not except I like it when my tie talks to me I can talk to corpses and shit too. Hell yeah. Scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antenna. Radio switchboard. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop, and cops know relay code. 10 4, station 41. I've got an urgent business over. 10 4, message received. 10 5, relay message. What's your status over? Just, just reporting in. Over. 1018, state your message, sir. Uh, I, I'm in dire need of financial assistance. 104, I hear you. I don't have the authority to grant your request, but... Is it him? Oh no. Even my boss knows my reputation. A dry voice asks in the background, what does he want? He says he needs money. Don't give him... Don't give... Don't give that asshole anything, he's just gonna drink it all. But Alright, the operator turns back to you. That's a negative. The additional funds, sir, over... The negative on the additional funds. It's paramount to the investigation that you grant me more money. He says it's important to the case. He isn't getting a red set, you could tell him that. Request denied, sir, over. Please, I'm begging you here. I don't even have a place to sleep tonight. He says he's in trouble. Doesn't have a place to sleep. Well, I guess we'd better crack the case before sundown then. Oh, what a dick. Yeah, yeah, he said. Enough, officer. This begging is below your dignity. This is authority. He says it's below my dignity. Nah, fuck my dignity. I don't want to be here anymore. I want to go home. Please come and get me. Uh, listen, he seems to lower his voice a bit, carefully choosing his words. It's okay. You can do it, sir. Over. What is he saying? The operator chooses to ignore the voice in the background. Did you want anything else, sir? He asks. Many of our colleagues are also here. Over. He's trying to keep you from further embarrassing yourself in front of your colleagues. You know, I keep begging, just please, I don't want to be here. I have to. Suddenly, the necktie feels like a boa constrictor around your neck, squeezing the dear life out of you. Try to loosen his death grip and breathe. Hey, if you don't want to have the most intense orgasm of your life, fine, don't. The grip eases a little. What the hell is happening to me? What the hell did I just read? He... he terminated the connection. The radio operator is no longer speaking up to the microphone and is addressing someone in the background. I guess he was in a hurry. Please help, I'm scared, I can't. Fuck, I can't breathe, help me, please. What? Everything's hurting me now, what the fuck? Radio false silent and labels the communication officer has disconnected the call. Oh. What was that? The lieutenant asks in a soft voice, gently grabbing your shoulder. It's okay, detective. What, you've never seen a man getting a panic attack before? Or, I call it subter... <laughs> subterfuge... Yeah, I don't even know how to pronounce that word. Subterfuge... Subterf something. I call subterfuge in a force, I've heard of it. Uh, that's just 
to it if you don't want to jump in. He gives you a long, concerned look, then uh, we should get on with our tasks. Work always helps me center myself. Now, anything else you need for me or my vehicles? 18 kilometers to the south south in the 41st precincts relay booth the small crowd is gathered around communication officer jules old boy Pedi around a dozen what the fuck am i reading small arms filled with cigarettes smoke a buzz with laughter when officer judith minot enters her left arm is in bandages and hair trimmed short what is going on here did something happen she asks startled john Vic, Vic, whatever turns to her and says what happened is my partner made contact. It's not good. He seems confused. Delirious, even. Vic Quimair stops to think. Mac the Torso. Torson is a finger fucking his fist. Laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to his partner, Chester McLean, near the entrance. Suddenly he interjects. Yeah, Mullen was fucking alright. Or was fucked alright. Sounded fucking drunk to me. A tall ginger on his right still has tears of laughter in his eyes. Yeah, Mac, that's right. This was some gnarly shit there. I mean, before before he started begging for money, it was... Satellite officer, Bikwamir, bites down on his knuckle. Narf! He shouts across the room. The commotion dies down. All eyes turn to him. None of this is funny. It's fucking sad, and what it is... It's a, he's a cop. He's one of us. God damn it. God damn this. Just, just give me the money. What did Medusa tell to purr before she turned the stone? My eyes are up. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. That was pretty good. Minot looks down at her neatly polished black shoes. There is a quiet firmness to her voice when she speaks. We must help him. Yeah, how do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him off the drink? Go jogging with him in the morning and get him on a, on a carrot juice? He's a lost man. I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. We wouldn't. The crowd in the room has started fidgeting uncomfortably. Someone's trying to slip out on Nust. Mac, man the door. He gestures to Orson to block the doorway, then turns to Minot. You know what he told me. I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his words. He sighs heavily and turns to address the room. The shit does not leave this room. So what, how am I hearing it then? Not a word of this to the captain or anyone else. We'll give him a couple of days to pull his shit together. Old boy lights another cigarette and says, I guess I can hold off the report for a few days. Good. McQueen turns to the others. Okay, everybody, nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laps now. Get back to work. So who's going to pay my bill? Far north on the other side of the motorway, the officer quietly hunches with his hand in the motor carriage. Tap on the fuel preheater gauge. Now, let's pick up the radio again. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe we can cruise for chicks or something. This is Pershing 57, the operator greets you. Blah, blah, blah. May I assist you? Uh, can you run a serial number from the boots? Yeah, because we did have a serial number. Sure, officer, what's the number and the make of the armor, if you know it? Blah. It's that. Got it. I'll contact the ICP database immediately. Call it back tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have dug up something useful by then. The International Collaboration Police ICP is an inter-solitary law enforcement service. The crown jewel in the moral in... Moral in turn dive... What in the fuck am I reading? It's something. It... it government thing. Yeah, reconnect me to the 41st, please. Type 4, come in. He hesitates. Firewalker, over. I need to report my badge missing. My badge? I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. 10 4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need the 10 22 the captain. Over. Oh, they're gonna really hate it if we tell them we lost our gun then. Any other good news? He says he lost his badge. <laughs> he what? He lost his badge. Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen, who do you think? 
It's Officer Dick. He tries to speak through laughter. Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Uh oh. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Okay, so maybe I should be trying to take the advice of these passive bits that tick up successfully. Uh, how do I defend myself from? Um, tell them to stop the Caesarius. Or. Yeah, it's not like I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs sarcastically. Oh, god damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer, Vic Murray, or whatever, is wondering if you might be joking and adds that, is t that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mullen Dictus. Hmm. Come on, man. Tell him to stop. This is serious. He's asking you to stop. He says this is serious. Of course it's serious. He lost his fucking badge. Uh, satellite officer. Blah, blah, blah. Concurs losing your badge is serious. Over. Can we just move on? I want to get it reported and be done with it. Hey, we got XP. And a new skill point. I don't know what I'm going to spend it on, but... 10-4, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me, Mac. Come here. You got to hear this. Dick Mullen lost his badge. What's going on? Super cop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He, he lost his goddamn fucking badge. Uh, yeah, enough of this. I have other things to discuss. 10-9 coming down. I didn't get that over. The animated conversation in the in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. New heights, even for Captain Sober. Ask him. The speaker gasps for air. Ask him if he lost his gun. Uh oh The room roars with laughter. So Sergeant Torsov wants to know if you lost your gun, too. Over... Yep. Oh fuck is my thought process too. I mean I have a decent chance, right? Fifty-eight percent. Let's go for it. Even before you can get the words out, everything gets scrambled in your brain. No, of course I didn't lose my fun gun. Fuck it, I didn't lose my gun. He says he didn't lose his gun, or his fun, whatever that means. Ask him to describe it as a gun, not his fun, just the gun will do. He laughs. Satellite Officer McLean requests a description of your weapon over... Why do I get a bad feeling I'm about to shoot myself in the foot here? <laughs> hey, coffee machine could be a great friend. Uh, For starters, it's massive. Got flared cooling vents alongside the front and hydrogen flasks sticking out too. Hell yeah, let's go with sarcasm. 10-9, come again. Please, over. It's got a magnetic accelerator and arc that accelerates the energized ball of periwinkle blue hydrogen-based plasma to near light speed. Uh, I'm gonna need to put you on speaker for a second, over. <laughs> oh, this is great. <clears throat> In contact, it detonates with with the power of a dying star, erasing every living thing from existence. Oh, and then I mentioned it's dripping with sexy blue plasma. Hey, welcome to my army. I need a drink. This is this is this is something.
The officer is describing his genitalia in exaggerated terms. Over. Host in heaven, did he lose his gun and his mind? Dear God, he lost his gun. Oh my, I can't eat. The man succumbs to laughter again. This isn't really a laughing matter. I agree. Mac can face a giant of Coco Nerve by himself, but Disco here made him piss his pants. Oh, I, I can't fuck. He lost it. Ask him if he still has his wiener. I'm not going to. Ask him. Sergeant Torson here is wondering if you're still in possession of your genitalia. Over. Okay, I gotta read these. Uh, yes, I lost my weed or two. Just lay off me, okay? I left it at, at his mama's after I fucked her ass all night. Tell him that. Mm. Yes, I lost my weed or two. Lay off, alright? He acknowledges your joke and asks you to lay off. Lay off, lay off. Tell him we'll lay off when he retrieves the goddamn police property that he has been entrusted with. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> like birds hitting us with all sorts of great zingers. Satellite officer. I heard him and I'm on it. 10 4 affirmative officer is in pursuit of his firearm. They're static. Oh god, I. The man is fighting back tears. Officer, do you need further assistance? Over. This might sound odd, but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. Uh, okay, 10-4, sir, I hear you. Relay your question over. Are we still on speaker, though? Retort says, wait, before you say anything stupid, think it through. I need information, not fear. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. 10-4, sir, I'm not hearing your question, the radio operator inquires. Hold on, are you alone in the room? I need some confidential information about myself. Oh, he's probably asking what my name is, because he doesn't know. I wanted to know if he got my... No, no, let's follow the advice. I need confidential information, and I need to know if he's alone. 100%. That's a negative, sir. I got a 10-12. Uh, that's a visitor present here. Over. So, I should probably not ask him. Uh, or, instead of asking about my full name, let's ask about my family. Ten, uh, excuse me, sir? Over. I probably don't want to continue on this route. Thank you, Inland Empire. Okay, nothing, never mind. Uh, guessing I shouldn't ask about these, huh? Yeah, let's wrap this up. Understood, sir. Over. 10-10. Transmission completed. Standing by. Roger that. 10-10. Over now with those words, the cabin becomes silent again. The radio microphone resting on its hooks. Pull out the... Was that for the pry bar? Because if we're going to do that, we can do something else. Let's run our fingers over one of the steering levers. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch and the metal clutch handle so familiar in your palm. Pull out the toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools are inside neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, unlike, unlike like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools, but what can you do? Work is work. Let's see. We're gonna. I don't know if there's an item limit or not. Ooh, flashlights are always great to have. Robust, weatherproof, and well made. Police issue blue. Perception lets you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. Take the rubber handle. Chinkers. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hands. Oh, I might as well take the pry bar with. Feels nice and cold in your hand. Heavier than you'd think. Maybe I could use it to open that one door we saw. Let's tap on the fuel heater thing. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerk 
pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch labeled heat. There's no use pressing the heat button, he says, and jingles his keys. It won't start without the ignition key. We're, translation, we're not going anywhere right now. Lame. Alternative translation, don't even think you can drive my MC. Lame. Well, that was pretty exhausting. Okay. Let's go back inside. This is some interesting, crazy, awesome dialogue. Now, should I spend points on everything? Hmm. Or maybe I should wait until I have one of those dialogue moments where it's gonna try using one of these and then spend it on that then? There's any tapes or something at the top. <clears throat> the exhaustive part is if you're reading it out loud. A 30 minute, 30 hour game is gonna be a lot longer. Is there any tapes or anything over here? No. Darn. I was hoping one of these might have had, like, the tape or whatever for the karaoke, which is the single most important thing ever. Whatever, let's go back down the... We gotta talk to that dude. Sure, on money, equip a plastic bag, collect bottles, and sell them at Frit. I wonder where I can get a plastic bag. Maybe he knows. Let's ask this guy. Hey, get... Can I help where do you? I get a bag? Can I help you? All right. Let's talk about Sylvie first. I talked to Sylvie. She left because of me, not you. Wait, what? He looks up surprised. Well, what about the bird? The bird? Yes, the bird. I found it lying on the floor with a broken wing the morning she left. Ooh, we could still blame it on her. I just read your comment. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, she didn't break it. I did. I th no, if I, told, if I tell him that, then he's going to charge me for it. So, no. She said it was just an accident. Why didn't she just tell me that? I don't care about stuffed birds. I care about my employees. He stumbles with words, shaking his head. Cheers. All right, he calms himself. Did she say anything else about me, you know? Here, please, did she say anything about me? Uh, she said she was flattered. It was just bad timing. Really? The man doesn't know what to say. He wipes his brown stares at the counter. I should... I should give her a call, then. Hey, we got XP for that. Thanks, I guess. He gives you a short nod. Was there anything else you wanted, or... Yeah, I want a discount for helping you, butthole. By the way, I'm gonna sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. Absolutely in the question. First, we find a sad banger, then we sing this piece to shit. Hell yeah. Your body is ready, sire. Is the trash container out back yours? Mine? No, it belongs to the whirl and rags. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. That's, and the neighbors, too. They put their trash in there and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. 
I like that. No, it does. Nothing stirs me and it isn't callous. It's common sense. I wonder what this feeling is. Prod at him and find out. That I will. Doesn't it seem callous to you, guarding even your leftovers from the poor? Callous? What are you? Krasmazov? Almost all establishments in Revacol keep their trash locked. The world in rags is not special in that regard. Krasmazov, nom nom blah 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 was an econ economist and a historical materialist. materialist. He was a lead, leading figure on the grad side of the... Oof, whatever this encyclopedia skill is, I don't like it. It gives me a lot of long-winded sentences of weird words. He was, he was the leading figure in the grad side of the Sen Sentinel Revolution, where, he's, where he headed the nine-day government. Mazov is considered the father of scientific communism. Oh, good. Communism, that's great. Zobi in the bubble. Yum yum, tell me more. Okay, yum yum, tell me more. He killed himself. Maybe I am, cries Mazal. What are we talking about? Was this not about the trash container? No, wait. The sperm points to the back of your head. What if I am, cries Mazal? We should return this theory in at a later time, officer. This here was about the trash container. We need our skis. What for, Mazov? Are you planning to nationalize my trash container? It concerns the case of the lieutenant's voice is harsh and sudden. Please cooperate. Hey, that was easy. He takes the key from under the counter and hands them to you. Just bring them back once you're done. Hey, 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 no, no, this is your Hey, hey, welcome to my army. And ask him for a drink. That's just gonna raise our bar tab. So about that money I owe. Yeah, so if you got it. Uh actually let's talk about something else. Oh, I've seen something here at the whirling. A thing I need to talk about. He rolls his eyes. What thing? I saw a sign that said the mess hall is reserved for the Union. Yes, not the whole damn Union. Thank God, just the nastiest and loudest fraction. He tosses his head in disdain. They come in here in the evenings, dumb, unruly type. I think they're big shit, or they think they're big shit, but they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. But la -di da He hates the Union, but grudgingly recognizes his power over him, so he's had to direct so he's directly, try that again, <clears throat> so he's directing his frustration at you instead, retaliate, uh, uh, which way is the retaliation gonna work, it's a shame you've gotta suck up to the union to stay afloat, I don't, I'm simply providing a service, or really facilitating the offering of services to paying customers, and he runs out of steam, it doesn't matter, I don't have to explain myself to you, the lieutenant gives you a meaningful nod. We should find out who this loud faction is occupying the booth. Loudness means talkative, and we need info. How do we find him? We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. He looks toward the booth. Men are hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. There are these things called days. You sleep between them. He's, he's saying they'll come after you've slept. Just making, just making clear that you got that. Thanks, logic. Guard, I saw Shina so that I couldn't go into the kitchen. Why can't I go into the kitchen? What are you, a cook now? That's none of your business. Um, I have a search warrant. No, you don't. How did you know? If you had a warrant, you'd, you'd be shoving it in my face right now. Yeah. Besides, the RCM doesn't do search warrants. I know the law. You'll just have to wait for the kitchen to open if you if you have to get in there, which you don't. You do realize you can just go into the kitchen at 1300? No, I did not. That's in half an hour. No need for superstar charm or Sambo-style antics here. Sambo is an acronym for Samarin Boxing, Graceful Martial Arts Stuff. Sambo-style implies stealth, cleverness, and cool. Just letting you know. Alright, let's talk about something else. What?
reaction speed. By the way, you should come back to this thing, base questionnaire, if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Okay. I wonder if reaction speed will be a good one to level. Need a drink now. Guard, I saw another thing at the whirling. Another thing. Great. I love those. No. Never mind. Goodbye. Alright, what are my options? This one's got a little time icon on it. Call Alice back in a day. Oh, I see. We, I really want to sing that karaoke. You need to find a sufficient tragic tape, then play it on a boombox to memorize the lyrics. I gotta get a hold of a sad song on a tape, guys. That's... that. Keep searching for the collar. Pay for damage. No, we're not doing that. Find booze and drink it. Hey, that's a quest? Find a bottle of alcohol, put it in your hand, equip it in the health, slot in your inventory, and the magic will happen. Hey, I have a quest to get 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 drunk. I need a drink. Do you have a do you have a shaker? Do I have a shaker in my hand? Is this he points to his empty hand, is this a shaker? He sounds irritated. Fuck him. He's not a shaker, it's nothing. He's holding nothing. You sound irritated. Why? All I want is a drink. Am I wearing a little bow tie? Am I wearing a bow tie and doing this? He shakes the imagery, sh imaginary shaker furiously. And he really doesn't want to be called a bartender, does he? Am I smiling? Do you see me smiling and shaking my little shaker? No. Do you know why? Because you're not a bartender. That's right, I'm the cafeteria manager. He calms his breath. I'm glad we cleared that. Is there anything else? <laughs> I wanted to fucking your gas. Uh, <laughs> you don't understand the seriousness of the situation. I'm an alcoholic. I need my fix. I'm an alcohol operated detective. If you want me to clean up the dead body and solve the case, then you need to insert alcohol into my mouth. That's, that's sound. Okay, well, in that case, let me pour you a nice, big, refreshing marinella. Do you want that out of glass or a pineapple? Glass. Don't be an imbecile. I'm not going to serve you, Marinella. I have to work. I have work to do and broken things to fix. That was all I'd like to return to. Okay, so much for that then. So at 13 o'clock, we can go in there. Hmm, what else should we do? I guess maybe put it, keep a tab on the. Ask Kuno, the kid throwing rocks, what he knows. Oh, for the main... Yeah. Oh, wait, we got the thing. Okay, that's that's where we're going. That's, that's, that's the plan. Because then we can open the trash. We can talk to this stupid kid. Hopefully kick his teeth in. Out of corpse. Okay. This trash container is locked. Sliding lid is a padlock that says Will and Rags. Open the padlock with the key. Resist. Force time. <laughs> yeah, now we got the key, so. With whale oiled crack, the lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. have a premonition that there's something in there? There is, but you won't like it. Mm. Fuck. No, no, we need to investigate now, just like that. He opens the lid. Okay, good. He opened it. Not my problem now. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste.
We're just in time. The lieutenant peers in. This hasn't been emptied in for over a week. Alright, go through the carton. You see milk, an egg rest with one broken egg, some pasta, blah blah blah. Packages somehow feel familiar. The box falls into pieces in your hand. Some kind of cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. The turbo noodles, nothing of note. The rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. Hello, wardrobe upgrade. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. Maybe not. The victim's clothes. The lieutenant smells them. Cadaverian odor is faint. If these belong to the, to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in early stages of decay. The lieutenant produces a black plastic bag marked evidence from his pocket. Drop them in here, officer. So if he has a bag, why can't I have a bag to pick up bottles? As I said, that's how you might need to make money. Bag the trousers. Kim quickly searches the jeans. Guitar. Mark. Blue jeans. Pockets empty or empty. He wore them with a belt, too. Wide belt. The loops appear stretched, but... You look in the container. Belt's missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Just give me the fucking bag. Something slimy catches your eye. Is this where I end up regretting... Fuck it. Reach for it. A drab, long sleeve shirt, olive colored, appears in the food waste, dripping with pus. Bag the shirt. Hey, I want well. This is a military type overgarment, no label or serial number. This is the kind of ribbon knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. He nods. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug catches your eye, but other than that, it's all thrown out a mug, uh, a thrown out towel, a mug, that's all. Alright, we should go to guard and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard or that one. He nods toward the red-haired boy behind him. I'd advise against confronting that force. Yeah, I don't like those kids. I actually agree. I think someone from the whirling might have been involved, maybe? Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash. The lid was locked and this establishment had the key. Just a small, loose thread. Okay. The mug. I'm getting that mug, too. Hell yeah. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. An antique? Only in its social sensibility. Well, take it. Hmm. The man briefly glances at the mug, then returns his sight to the trash. I don't know why I won't want it, but... Use the interact button in inventory to inspect the item. I'm trying, it's not working. Maybe that's not the interact button. We also have a flashlight, we got a chain cutters, and we got a pry bar. Is this the interact? Ah. It's just a racist, yeah, a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not much. Hmm. There's actually quite a lot to read in into here. Actually, look at all that content. Oh boy, here we go. What are you going to say about a broken tossaway mug that you dug out of the garbage? Oh dear. This mug is an example of prejudice. I'm going to use it as an example of what not to do. I'm going to push this into the face of every merchant I find and tell them this is your inane ideology. The mug will be useful by denouncing it can earn political capital to mask my badass hustling, i.e. fraud and embezzlement. The mug didn't belong in the trash, it was just a funny mug. Can't anyone laugh at it? I don't know, it just wouldn't, an example of what not to do. But it was in the trash, why not just call it out? 
when you see it or do some volunteering work. Just finish your case, detective. <laughs> Yellow man mug. I don't under... Oh, I got gotcha. it. Asia. Okay, so let's leave the fucking kids alone. And we shall proceed to this bay. Talk to that butt munch again. And see what he does. Or what he has to say. I have like this ominous feeling that I'm gonna end up screwing up my skills or whatever. But like in the long run. Can I help you? Can I help you? Here he arches an eyebrow. Here's your trash container key. Thanks, I hope you found what you were looking for. I found the victim's clothes. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. Hmm. Who else has keys to the trash container? The trash collection service? Yes, municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent there last week and when. This will have to be one of those little threads that solves itself down the road. He turns to the man. Thank you, anyways. Someone else have done it? Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my staff. None of us would tamper with a crime scene. Yeah, alright, thanks, whatever. Okay, so that didn't do us a whole lot of good in the end, did it? Let's see, keep searching for the caller. Ask your station for additional funds. I think we fucked that one up, didn't we? Find booze, where's the rest? Wait a minute, I know where to find booze. Wasn't it down here? Maybe, maybe we just have to lick it off the table. Oh, I don't have a chance to anymore. Let's see if she says anything new before we go running around oh, again, randomly. Sweetie. I see you met up with your colleague. Oh, I didn't even realize you were being voiced. I'll buy it. The lieutenant nods politely. Wait, who's sweetie? Does that mean you like me? You are a handsome man, officer, with your moustache and your chiseled jaw and that silly dimple on your chin. But dear, you're not for me. I'm too old and too married besides. Yeah, I was already sold when you said you were too old. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained, I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. Her eyes glitter over the top, over the rims of her glasses as she looks up smiling. Ooh. This Lena is, a wacky, is wacky enough for the Motley crew. Hire her on the spot. Okay. How would you like to roll with me? Eyes light up. Whatever do you mean? I want you to be my wheelchair partner in fighting crime, Rid ridding backyards of corpses, catching sequence killers. Hell yeah. You do all the work. Your first task get that corpse off of the tree. Sequence killers? Oh my, she sounds impressed, but I think you already have a partner, sweetie. Yeah, but that's a dude that's. A I don't need sausage in my crew. A partner who needs you to help him get a corpse down from a tree. Forgot I had you. Hmm. I know, I know, but there are also side mysteries, sequence killers, and forays into the paranatural. I can assure you with absolute certainty there are no sequence killings taking place in Martinez. No, gentlemen, no need to squabble, she turns to you. I wouldn't be of much use to you anyways. Why? Three heads are better than two. Thank you. I mean, she is a cryptozoologist. That might actually come into use, I would imagine. So while she may not offer us much physical exuberance in, in, in that department, uh, I think 
touching in the brain she would. She, all right, thank you, but she looks out the window. Martinez isn't the most wheelchair accessible place, you see. I'd slow you down. <laughs> you seem to be in a chair. Turns back to you with a hopeful glint in her eye. Perhaps another time? Uh, sweeties need money. Do sweeties get money? Her expression becomes very serious. Oh, sweetie. I heard your conversation with the manager about your financial troubles. What do you... What do you get your... When do you get your next paycheck? If she could, this woman would feed and clothe you and every other sad, lost person on earth. What is a paycheck I haven't seen? Baby? Ooh. Tug on her heartstrings. Hell yeah, this is suggestion. Oh no. Try force a tear out of your duct, really rip into the whole emotional aggression. Fuck, it was 83%. Come on. Hey, I'm not reloading my safe. Hell no. This is not the time for safe scum. And fucking shit, it's all over for me. Oh god, I'm gonna die on a street art. Oh, I don't know what happens if my morale goes all the way to. But officer, he leans in so that you can, only you can hear, but his tone is forceful. Get a hold of yourself, please. Sweetie, I'm sorry, but I think you need more help than I can give you. She looks distressed and even a little frightened. So, what is a paycheck? I haven't seen a paycheck. He must be joking, he pauses, reflecting, although our pay does sometimes feel like a joke. It's not easy to assert your right to a decent living wage when you don't have a strong union beside, behind you. Maybe you should talk to Everart, the union leader. Interesting idea, this Everart sounds powerful. Maybe you can wrangle some coins out of his pocket. Okay. Oh no, I'm sorry, I don't have money for you. If there's anything else I can do for you, just ask. I don't know if you noticed, but I don't know where I am or what I'm doing or anything. Her eyes follow your movement with some concern. Yes, officer, you look rather dazed like a stunned fox, but surely things can't be that bad. Uh, I drank so hard I forgot literally everything. Oh my, it takes a moment. It takes a moment. It takes a moment to process. You know where we are, right? Uh, we're dead, haunting each other. We're ghosts. Now, now, she tilts her head as she looks up at you with maternal sol uh, solicitude. We are alive in a hostel called Whirling Rags, and the whirling, whirling itself is in the city of Revacal. Honestly, I don't know diddly squat about Revacal. What kind of place is this? Her eyes widen. How would I even begin to tell you? Revacal is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. Right. I haven't, I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revacal is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. There's a pause as she studies your expression. You must look quite lost. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? Actually, I do. I'm pretty sure it was 51, 1951. All I know is we're approaching the end of times. Perhaps, dear, perhaps. But for now, it's just the spring of 51. She is perturbed by your not knowing what year it is. But not by your mention of the apocalypse. It must be the end of times. The lieutenant studies you, rubbing his chin. I'm beginning to suspect that you might indeed be completely adrift in this reality. Thinks the lieutenant. How can it be that bad? Never mind, we're in this now. Oh, good God. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more time, or one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Um, I like to think it's a dictatorship of the proletariat, but I don't know. Our leaders are fierce warriors who traverse the plain on steeds. Civilizations cower before us. Government by intelligent machines that perform calculations to determine the 
freest market. Everyone hustles and grinds like a badass visionary. Radios are being used to control people's minds and disturb perception, our perception of reality, concealing our true masters, foreigners, and women. <laughs> cop. We are living under the cop project. I'm going with the calculations thing. Oh, no, nothing like that, dear. River calls a special administrative region led by an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have almost no government of our own, certainly no machines. Oh, that sucks. I don't... I don't know. Still looks like there's a lot of hustling going on. Maybe she's wrong. Also... There's, there's no governments. How come there are cops? That's actually a good question. Oh dear, this is troubling. You really ought to know that, being one yourself. There really aren't any cops in Revacol, not in a traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. Viva la revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. Good, baby. She'll feel sorry for us and give me back my morality point. What is the revolution? I don't really care, but... A defeat, I'm afraid. The people of this archipelago tried to build something new, something different. The rest of the world didn't like it, so they came and ended it. This was 42 years ago. Mm, but I'm a cop. Whatever it was hasn't stopped me. It's like nothing seems to have stopped me. Of course, sweetie, I, I really don't know how to explain it better. I'm just a poor woman, she thinks. What do I know of these things, and how can I help you? Mm -hmm. Who could tell me more? Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask. She turns to the lieutenant. I don't want to ask him. He sucks. No, he looks away. I'm not an encyclopedia. <laughs> I, would, I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. New task, get a reality lowdown. Of course, she turns to you, then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. You seem to be in a chair. Oh yes, dear, I'm a paraplegic. A paraplegic is someone with limited or no ability to use the lower half of their body. Paraplegia is caused by spinal cord injuries, like falling from a great height or a grenade explosion. Yeah, paraplegia, uh, it's, it sucks. It's a terrible thing. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Thanks for clearing that up. Let's move on. No problem, she nodded, smiling at you from behind glasses. There's no bitterness in her voice. She accepted the curiosity her condition in inspires a long time ago. I gotta go now. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. She gives you a small wave. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an autosave. Now, where shall we go? Honestly, <clears throat> what I would really want is a bag. So I can pick up the garbage and bottles and stuff out. Money's good. It would save me the effort of having to hack the game. It's raining again. Thing. It was clear just an hour ago. I don't care. Okay, directions. What's in the north? Uh, pier, apartments. What's in the east? Now the question is, is north up? Or is it going to be upper right? Like, is the compass... Which way? I don't know. To the east is... A store. That might be where I'd go. I don't have money, but that's where I'll go. Maybe I'll just stay in front of stuff and look sad and somebody will feel sorry for us and buy us something. Some shops to the south and... Whatever. Okay, whatever. I don't care anymore. Return. Gotta go. Whoop, whoop. Okay, I pressed M, but there is... You... What is this? So we don't have a map, but there's stuff here. 
These are found white checks. Those in white are available to try now. Okay, this one. How do I check? I have no idea. Maybe they'll give me something later. Goods from the lorry have fuzzily litter littering the surroundings. Oh. Jump jams, popular music, music mag. Velocity magazine, most able bodied men. Issue you host a top ten list. Hello, shopkeeper. Uh, welcome to Revachol. Why are you so fat? I'm gonna call you Eraser Head. Because he kinda reminds me of an eraser. Not not the movie. That was totally different. Welcome to the Rebel Call announces the Rebel. Rotund man, the remark isn't addressed at you, it's addressed at Kim. Hey, I know Revacol, that's where we are. Don't you welcome to Revachol me. My grandfather came here from a 3,000 year old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Yeah, we, we took them your land. Every school of thought and government has failed in this city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. Yeah, you... You, you, you tell them. It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. Totally. What he means is, fixation on the Revacolian nation makes it harder for Revacol to actually attain self-determination. He's right here in... Uh, just stop ripping into this guy, he's really proud of being Revacolian. Oh, come on, man. I just said welcome to Revachol. It's a lorry driver thing. Revachol. Well, now we know how it's pronounced. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here? That I should watch myself and behave? Hello, Larks. How are you? I'm Necrosis. And I'm playing a lot of reading out loud. But you see, sort of. I'm an officer of the RCN. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. I remember nothing. Silence, the air between them becomes tense. He's woke up. Hmm. Ah, that's fucked. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. Ooh, okay, we got this. Fucking again, we got your back. Give the lieutenant a punch on the shoulder. I don't think that sounds like me giving him back. Well, I think we all learned something here. Smile at the lorryman. Now that that's so, we have a couple. Hmm. I don't know, it says I got a uh, smile and uh, do that one. I down. haven't learnt anything I didn't know before. Lorryman shakes his head with an indignation. The lieutenant exhales, exhales and resumes his regular calmness. Now that that's so, we have a couple questions. Whatever you say, officers. He waits imp impassively, cigarettes smoldering between his fingers. Oh no, the mug, the racist mug. Go on this mug. Is it yours? He stares at the yellow man mug, then suddenly explodes. Ha 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 ha. Oh man, oh man, that's great. Look at that guy go. I haven't seen anything that funny in a while. Is it yours? Racist Larry driver. I just now noticed that's what it did. <laughs> God damn, he wipes his tears from his eyes. Thanks for that, but, but no, it's not mine. He doesn't live in Martinique. Uh, what were you hauling? Not much anymore. I'm here to pick up cargo, but the dock workers are on strike, so it's a wait and sit on your ass situation. How long has this been going on, then? The strike? They've been at it for a while. A month, two months, maybe? He gestures towards the lorries, but this here is the last week or so. What kind of cargo are you supposed to pick up? Apples. Bullshit. 
Apples is exactly the kind of thing you'd say if you had something to hide. Apples? Yeah, apples. I take it you had other questions? Uh, what was that argument all about? Oh, and Lux, you missed out on so far all sorts of just weird, crazy, funny, screwy dialogues and stuff. I'm sure there's a bit but fuck ton more. Now that you're up to date. It's about biological determinism, natural law, the sorting of the races, he spits on the ground. Oh no. Not the most popular topic nowadays with the coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like a common sheep. No, like an ostrich. Uh, hmm. So you're just a racist, makes sense. Nah, you want to be the unpopular guy. You're the, you're the antagonist this world needs, right? Uh, I'm not the only one. Look, I've read books. Wow. He, he gestures with a cigarette for emphasis. The science of racial theory has all been proven, even if some people don't want to accept it. I do not like where this is going. Hey, Wordwin. People who study these things say that you and me are superior by design. Not you, this guy's fat. He's got a, like a melon head. A skinny melon head. He glances at Kim, so naturally we... Occidentals... Occidentals... Is it Occidentals? We Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously you can see that the merit... You can see the merits in that. Yeah, you prime example of superior design, dude. This is humanity's highest state of evolved, uh, evolved form. Uh, like, open your eyes. Haven't you noticed something different lately? An unfortunate downturn, maybe. When members of the superior race cease to believe in their innate superiority, they stop competing for resources. Yeah, what's the problem with that? The problem? The damn kips are showing a real good game lately. Same with the mos mosquitoes. He shows a sharp glance at Lieutenant Kitsuragi and the and, and the intruder species too. They're on the precipice of cultural victory. What in the shit is this guy rambling about? I'm just gonna say nothing. I don't know. It's true. He pushes on. Also, you need to realize the dangers of mixing races. What dangers? This is how evolution works. You gotta create diversity. It's so we don't get wiped out by, like, one virus strain or something. Who knows what might happen if people don't stay in their birthplace. You might end up with a new sub-race with unknown characteristics, leading to extra competition. That's why you've got to control the offspring. Uh, sure, whatever, I'd rather talk about something else. Go right ahead. The man scratches his heavy set stomach. He may be a cop, but that won't help you avoid the calamity to come. Lieutenant Kitsuragi's stern expression remains unchanged, but you sound something there below. Oh, he's got a boner, I got it. Now, a lot of moral fiber on this one yet. Not a lot of moral fiber on this one yet. He thinks, wriggled out, wriggled out of it. What happened? Did your balls shrivel up? You had plenty of chances to get off this road, but no, you let this guy keep talking. But then, when the time came to make your choice, you tried to split the difference. Weak. Hey, I didn't want conflict. How's you do is Mr. Wordwin? Ooh. Like that. Oh, this is the shop. This place isn't as big as I thought it was gonna be. Sweet. I don't have any money. Sleeping heals all your health and morale. Oh, sweet. That means I don't even have to waste resources, right? Yellow roses. Melancholy pop pops. Oh. Like, I'm still on a mission. We gotta sing that karaoke song. The terror machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle, ten cents. What is this? Ew. Hmm? The clerk looks out, out of her magazine. Oh, that's the tear machine. What? Yes, but what is it? She knits her brow, confused. It's a machine for tear? You know, you find tear outside, like, 
bottles or whatever and put it in the machine. Then it gives you money. Oh, so if I ever find a fucking bag, I can actually pick up those bottles and shit and I can sell them here and make, make lots and lots of money. I see, and how do I pick up tear for the tear machines? You, you need a bag. I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out. You, you ran out of bags. She shrugs awkwardly. Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some out there. She points outside somewhere. Thanks for nothing. Jesus Christ. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. What's that magazine she's reading? I don't know. Uh, what magazine are you reading? You mean this? She looks at the cover, posting a colorful photo of two girls kissing. This is Pop Stars. It's got, like, famous people in it. It's not for sale. Aww. Can I just look at it? Composure. Looks like it has something something called Police de la Mode featured on page 34. This speaks to you. I approve of this. Very futuristic. Tap on the girls kissing. She pops her raspberry flavored bubble gum and nods. I see she's into the licking of carpets too. The lieutenant frowns at you before turning to the clerk with an apologetic half smile. What magazine are you reading? You mean this? Yeah, yeah. This is pop stars. It's got like famous people in it. It's not for sale. Stupid famous people. Forget all about all that. What is what this what this is fashion police feature. That's worded really weird. Yeah, I'm gonna click it. Um it's where they rate different outfits famous people wear. It's kinda of funny. They're kinda of mean. It's about who's the most stylish. Hey, let's flatter her. Point to her hat. I bet your hat would take the prize. Um no. I don't like it. I hate then it. Why are you wearing it? We are not the fashion police. We're the real police. I, I'm, I'm actually here with the fashion police. I lost my badge, too. Before we go on, what is this frit? I don't know. Frit? And what is frit? A 7 to 11 grocery store. Why is it written with three T's? I think they think that the extra T makes it funkier. It doesn't. She chews on her gum with disgust. It doesn't. Oh god, encyclopedia. The story goes that normal frit with two T's, a men's workwear shop in somewhere, was already taken, so when Frit Retail Inc. grew into multinational corporation, they had an extra letter to avoid trademark infringement. That's... whatever. Proceed. Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... Oh, yeah, I can clearly see you're busy. Can you tell me anything about the dead body, or can you tell? Yeah, can you tell me anything about this reality we're in? Oh, and they stop voicing her. Fuck, reality? You mean like what reality? Economic reality? Or she is a student unexpectedly called upon by a teacher. Can she answer the classroom question? Uh, no, not economics. No, I meant physical reality. Like, what is an atom really? I mean, come on. I don't know. What about it? Uh, um, where are we? We're in Frit? No, I meant where are we on a larger scale? As mankind or as a nation or... Like, yeah, as mankind. In a good place? She rubs her face thinking. Alright, so she's just that, that type of... I mean, science is doing great, and the radio computer thing seems to be kind of big. I don't know. She shrugs and folds her magazine back. <laughs> like what? Like you can't own a particle, man. Yeah, that... Should have seen some of the weird shit that we had earlier. Ooh. What time is it? Can you give me that? I don't know. Look at the clock. It's right behind you on the wall. Which means you're staring at it. You can't read the clock. The clock shows the time at 10.09. Oh, 
No, it's 1332, which means it's 132 in the... The hand seems to be still. It's apparent the clock doesn't work. I should have read the rest of the line before I open my mouth. Alright, what is the revolution? When ordinary people take over the government and, um, demand democracy? What about the one we had here in Riverfall? Or whatever they pronounced it as. Yeah, it happened like 50 years ago or so. Sorry, I'm not very good at this. At history, I mean. The coalition. What is it? Someone told me there is one. Our government? Or do you mean something else? Sorry, I don't I don't need to finish this article. I really need to finish this article. She taps the magazine on the counter. Alright. Clearly she's not very cooperative in our dialogue here. Cool. She seems happy to return to her reading. Can you tell me anything about the dead body? Maybe that a better topic for you. Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Did you know the man who died? Not really. Not really does it mean you knew him a little? Um, no, I didn't know him at all. How long has it been there? I don't know. Really long? What do you think happened? Um, I don't know. No need to worry. The lieutenant's voice is soothing and professional. It's just a standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know. Okay. She scratches her nose. Thanks. Uh-oh. She brushes a strand of hair off her face and tries to return to her magazine. So I guess I can't, like, actually shop here. Now, I would love to be able to figure out where to get that bag that they spoke of. Oh no, people. Oh, what is this? Hey, free money. Hmm, what's going on over here? Like a Bastards! We have a right to work! The man yells towards the harbor gates, his voice the loudest of the lot, oddly screechy, and oddly screechy for a man of sex. What's going on? Pull up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. The broad-shouldered alpha male turns to you. He's a full head taller than than everybody else here. Yeah, that man looks like he's about to just fucking knock everyone out. Here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down? Why should I? We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. Um, okay, I'm thinking no. Fighting for a cause here. Right to work. Right to work. I was thinking more like right to vacation time or something. Anything but working, essentially. Besides, we're not that different. It helps the people see us talking. Cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Uh what kind of causes are we talking about? Rights of people, rights of workers, to have gainful employment, to make a salary, and feed their families. Fuck your families, you have a right to remain silent. His manner of speaking is wooden, the tone of voice bland and uninspired, almost as if compelling, compiling reasons from a set of learned phrases. Yes, ma'am. Gonna, regardless, I have some questions for you. Maybe you should ask them the questions. Like why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you! Fuck politics, what? It's just all... We have families to feed, you piece of shit! He points his finger at the man sitting on the railing. So do we, scub! Hey, it's Mario. The loitering man hollers in return. Uh, yeah, I want to get into the harbor, too. Have fun. He snorts. Union shits are on full strike. Don't think they're going to let you through the gates. Are you trying to meet their fat boss? Uh, interviewing people about a murder that took place here behind the ho hostile cafeteria there? I don't know anything about a murder. His reply is snappy and terse. The mention of killing sends a barely noticeable shiver of tenseness through him. Interesting. Absolutely nothing. Wouldn't put it past these harbor bugs. They 
They'd do anything to stay alive. Right to work, he again shakes his large fist and turns back to you. It's shameful, cops doing nothing. He'd be like, hey, I can't even find my badge. So don't, 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 don't bring me into this. You should bring a backup, open the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. This is not my area of expertise. We're not picking a side in this just yet, so. Pity. He, turn, he turns around and bellows at the gates. Let us work. Like, what is a strike? Like, really? When a bunch of ungrateful lazy cockroaches can't get their act together and decide to block honest work for other people, he shifts uncomfortably in his workers overalls. What do the strikers want? He beats me. They, mum they mumble nonsense about boardrooms and workers' rights while we... He raises his fist and starts shouting again. I have the right to work. Man, this guy really wants to work. There's something odd in the way he carries himself. His set of clothing looks vaguely mismatched. The different pieces of the attire seem ill-fitting. Ignore the discrepancy. Ill-fitting? What does that mean? This shirt is far too small and unpleasantly tight fit, while the overalls held up by a belt seem to fit a man who, with much more... That wouldn't be the same belt that's missing from the pants that we pulled out of the trash, would it? You wearing new clothes? He ignores your question, choosing instead to turn to the ema emaciated workers, raising both fists in the air. The clothes are obviously not his. Silence is the answer. There's something off here, but he won't say what. I am. Uh, yeah, let's just get the hell out of here. Echo don't do much about the politics. It says G R I H. Let's talk to Mario. It's a me, a Scab? Scab. That's the man with jolly eyes. You're hazy on the notion of a scab. Smells like politics, though. Those of you that don't know, I think scab is people that get hired to work during a strike. So. Yeah, smells like politics, though. Maybe it's got something to do with wasps he reaches for. Time to time. Can I ask you? Uh, I'm not a scab. I'm a cop. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. That's how competition works. Companies love it. He chuckles, then realizes. Speaking of, what brings the RCM here to the Wild North? Come to see the strife? I'm looking for assistance with a dead body situation. Oh, actually, better yet. I'm a bit short on money right now. Can you give me some of it? Sure thing, my friend. I can help you out. He flips a coin towards you. And I coordinate. Ooh. We got this. Fuck. The coin narrowly slips by your outstretched fingers and falls to the ground. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to throw it like that. It's a thing we harbor folk do, passing around cargo and such. He rubs the back of his head. It was not meant as provocation or ridicule. Lieutenant Kitsuragi picks up the coin and hands it to you. Appreciate it. Hey, that kid just gave me money when I asked him for it. I can help. Hey, word win. Quick, give me some money. But I don't know if that works for anyone else. Right, better yet, let's go find Luigi. Help me find Luigi. Right. Always glad to help out the RCM. We're on the same branch. You and I, humans, I mean, not slithering scabs. I'm looking for assistance with a dead body situation. <laughs> body still hanging in the tree. He rubs his chin as if pondering his core beliefs. Aye, that's a rough pickle. Can't help you with that. Let me ask him for more money. I like money. It allows me to buy stuff. Does this mean you can let me through the gate? I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a grantor of passage. He takes a swig and points up the stairs with his flask. Passage grants itself. 
If it's also simple, why don't the strike breakers just go up the stairs? That's simple. They just walk in. That sounds like a trap. I walk right past measure head and go in. Past measure head. Yeah, the two and a half meter tall Seminese Supreme Seminese supremacist there. He points to the bridge above the gate. Walk right past him. You like the portrait style? It's got its own little uh, flavor for sure. This is a fucking trap. Then press the button to unlock the door. Aha. Then go past him again. Okay. And you enter the harbor through the office, Esta. So you're saying it's actually quite difficult. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely impossible. For example, you could best, you could best measure head in a physical confrontation. Or you could convert to a 70s supremacist worldview. Or, hmm, he strokes his mustache. Maybe it actually is completely impossible. Uh, God, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going there. Sure, the man whistles a jaunty tune, the wind rustling the whiskers. Uh, come here to investigate a murder. Murder, huh? That sounds a lot like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. It's actually very fun and easy. <laughs> or you're right, it's almost impossible. I'm 91% sure I'll never get it solved. Nah, I'm going with the fun and easy. I don't believe you. Post love and aventurier said the same thing. They tried to get me to be their their push man. So fun, so easy. They said it's just walking. He shakes his head at the, at the memory. It wasn't. I'm doing much better here at the harbor, being an honest union man with a lot of free time on his hands. Yes, I, I, I don't. At the moment, I don't really care about this politics stuff. Let's go in another direction. Basically, anywhere but here. Wait, what is this? The lorries probably store fuel here, now they store booze. Can I have some? Can I go in here? The garage factory of magnets and miracles. The lottery stuck on the traffic jam. This big, heavy garage made machine is well kept for such an old machine. Look in the window. I keep thinking something's gonna fucking hurt me every time. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a Larry Men's cabin with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. What kind of what kind of stickers and insignias? The driver has adorned his space with substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations without honor or strength and purity are glued to the various panels. What about the back seat? The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep. Large ashtrays, there are several suns and wheels sewn into the cutouts. A book with ragged edges catches your notice. The front cover features a large, muscular man. The title reads, Man from Hazle in the Lost City of the Pygmy... Pig, pygmies. Pig, pygmies. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. He grits his teeth. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. The lieutenant nods towards the racist lorry driver. I think this lawyer belongs to our tough guy. Oh, d d dude, okay, okay. Likely yes, this guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. Excellent, I... Keep exploring. A foreign car kept in good condition. Oh, I just now notice I can actually use my mouse wheel to... What is this? It's a horseback monument. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing towards the sea. It's as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue pedestal reads, I am Felipe III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian, Philippian kings of Revacol, son of Felipe... Second, the opulent... I don't care. Uh, 
Bam. Just, just click it. I just want to see success stuff go off. Even by the standards of the Philippine King's old some, some, sumptuous Felipe was known for his profligate. My brain no work no more. In what way? Oh, God. Well, he blew through the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the Caesarean of Rebecall. Hmm. Fascinating. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the annex Antisentennial Revolution, an end to his family line, and the monarchy of the Insulidian Isol. Yeah, I... Me and words still. <laughs> I didn't want to blame it on anything but me. <laughs> How did he manage to blow through the entire national treasury? Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber where he stored unfathomable wealth, Krugerins, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. Call it the Sol Arlal. It was obscene. There were whispers. There were whispers. He slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers like some obese dragon instead of a bed like a normal person. Yeah, that's how I do it too. The man certainly knew how to live. like to sleep on gold hustler style. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. But what now? You see, old Felipe wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremo uh, ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose can. <laughs> nose candy. Okay, what is nose candy? Cocaine. Oh, right, of course. This is a lot to process. His Majesty's courier, courier, courier said it helped him connect with the higher realms. So he was addicted to nose candy, a bloated druddy. That's what the revolutionary said. 150 years later, uh, right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped his majesty's mortal remains in the ins Insolidian Bay. Okay, where is he buried now? Beneath the cold water of the Insolidian... Is that an Insolidian? Insolin... Insolin, of course. I get it. Insolidian... Ins I, I, the more you say it, the harder it gets. Insolidian Bay throws their by the revolutionaries after they cleaned up the royal mausoleum. What happened to the statue? The original was blown apart by the com uh, the communards, then further damaged during the landing of the coalition's airship during the turn of the century revolution when Martinez was leveled. I'm so regretting having clicked on this statue. Most historians think the coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue. If the communards had more time, they would have reduced it up to even to even finer pieces, who restored it. Some years ago, the group of liberals, artistically inclined individual designers mostly, though it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Rebecca in the poorest part of the city. <laughs> uh, we do actually, in this case, it's the encyclopedia, but the skill I put a couple points in. Like, we were talking to our tie, we were talking to a corpse, and all sorts of great things. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart, like an instant frozen in time. A rare butterfly trapped in amber floating on a sea of shit. Majestic. That's brilliant. So funny and nihilistic. People in Marnese tend to disagree, as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders with more nuanced social awareness than the young ironists. Hey, you got a skill point. I should probably spend it at some point. Horseback Monument to do, do, do Philippine 2. The squanders, however, with the with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about what the hui pui le le think of him in death. Not that he ever did in life. Okay, let's click the fuck out of that. Jesus Christ. Ooh. Hey, something yellow. 
Hey, wait, tank top. Physical instrument. What does that do? Whoa. What is this one? Conceptualization versus... Instrument. What does it do? Flex power and muscle. Enjoy healthy organs. What is it? Is it I, I don't know what that does. Does it give me more health or something? No? Okay. Then we're not going to use it. Actually, maybe... Let's stick with that one, because this one reduces something. Suggestion. Being able to suggest things to people is probably... Hey! More money. Oh, hell yeah. Wait, is this... Is that gloves? No. Sorry, I'm just seeing shit. The voice is in my head. Making me see things that don't exist. The pale driver. A small wrinkled woman does not grieve. She nods along something on a radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands and there is a warm smile on her face. Oh god, not the sense I go pay. <laughs> the photo and, and an ambrotype from the turn of the century as Golden Ezra smiled. There we go, Island Empire. Inland Empire, sorry. It's the warmth of a winter's night fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter. Some cigarettes and food money? Maybe she's your... Grandma? Nothing. Her smile just keeps widening and her hair is gray like lead. Snap your finger in front of her or... Yeah, let's do that. Wait. Wait, the lieutenant stops you before you can snap. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? Why? I just told you why. No, you didn't. If you say so. Alright, fine. Screw you too. Like, is this an actual item right here? No. I thought it was like a pair of gloves, but it's just garbage on the floor. Maybe we can use her to sleep for certain nights. Uh, let's go in a different direction. Let's go... Maybe that way. Who is this? I don't think we even talked to this thing. Whatever it is. Tommy Lahmer. Man mutters to himself, accenting the beats as he goes. A simple little cannon, so he seems to be making it up as he goes. <laughs> I am the law. I can just introduce myself as I am the law. No, let's keep listening. From another planet. Hey there. Uh, da, da, I, I, I'm the law. Yes, you are, my man. Hmm, he's really cooperative. What's going on here? It's the jam, my man. He motions towards the sprawl of the lorries with a sweeping gesture. Where's the jam? It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates of the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating. An all-around clusterfuck. Ooh, clusterfucks. I love clusterfucks. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long-haul limbo. For days upon days upon days. Upon days. He glances south. Down the road upon days. Limbo, huh? So that's where I am. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Hmm. It's official. He too agrees this is the antechamber of the afterlife. So, how long have you been here? Feels near forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires. The oil and the fumes of mazout. I like how you spelled tires with the letter Y. It's fancy. Uh, extravagantly phrased, but I, I can roll with it. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. He snickers. Behind the laugh, however, a touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? Money. Women. Power. I, I need to find my badge, and I need that, that mixtape so I can do the karaoke. Care to, sp oh, care to spare some change for working stiff? Huh? Sudden financial sp duties snap him out of his days. Oh, no, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay for unfinished work. They who? 
the boss's man. Or the boss's man. Gotta give it that extra oomph. Makes sense. First work, then pay. I don't know who these bosses think they are, but that sounds like a good arrangement for them. Yeah, it sure ain't good for me. Or you. I'd spare a coin or two for a city cop down on his luck. If I had, say, four myself. Know anything about the dead man? The one banging behind the hostel? Yeah, one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for, otherwise, I uh, haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here, keeping busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Busy with what? Analyzing the fundamental structure and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. Wait, what? Nothing. I'm just messing with you, man. Don't mind my idle verbosity. Where are you hauling, anyways? Oh, high grade narc. <laughs> You're talking to a cop. Oh. High grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Time to arrest him. Relax, he's merely joking. So it looks like my rhetorical side is arguing with my authority side. Um, uh, wicked. I've always wanted a friend in the underworld. Ha, ah, no, I'm joking, my man, he grins. Palm runs a nice clean business, his haul of cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to the Grod in the... Occident? Occident? Though we've been making headway in the little bit of market lately. Hmm, how about... So, that's your machine behind you. This rockin' beauty, he points at the lorry with his thumb. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. You're interested in heavy-duty cargo machinery? Oh no, not the encyclopedia. A, more, a motor lorry, also called a camion, on, on Kylo and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of fallen lost rust bucket. Maybe the A6? Yeah, it's impressive with my wisdom. That's that's definitely a foam uh, FALN A6 you got there. I was thinking of getting the A7 myself, you know. It's just good eye, my man. Yep, she's an old one, but reliable. He gives the sight of the lorry a friendly knock. Me and her spent a long time together. There it is again, a little touch of sadness beneath his cool. He thinks he's spent too long in this lorry. Could I get one of the fallen tracksuit things you're hauling? We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. Lame. So, nothing illegal then. Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment while I was on the road. Right, I had another question. Ooh. Empath oh, my empathy's fucked. Yeah, we're not gonna... Okay, um... I don't even give a shit about the strike right now. Don't be a stranger. He gives a salute with two figures. I have other places I wear the good. Oh, we should probably try calling uh, the station. Some great tectonic force has cracked the pavement like an eggshell. Purple. Maybe a sea monster did this to the plaza. The damage looks like it could have been caused by an earthquake. No, it's definitely sea monsters. 100%. Uh, what was my missions at this point, if I care to jog my memory? Ah, yes, find booze and drink it, of course, and sing karaoke, and not pay for damages, because that doesn't make any sense, that's just silly. The ancient fountain, it doesn't pump water anymore, there's a tree in it. What's this? I want that. I don't know what it is, but I want it. Tire tracks leading onto the roof. The slush and rain has almost washed them off. What? Oh, wait, what is it? Okay, just, you know. The spirit chirps and clicks of swallow, and clicks of swallows fills the air. 
Should I talk to Dan? Nah, let's click on this instead. Are you really gonna take the long way around? This coin operated viewer has been banged up and inoperable. Oh, look at all this stuff. On the cover stands a very muscular man surrounded by flames. The book is titled Man from Gilles in the Wildfire. This book has a rose, a pistol, and a half naked dame on its cover. I want that one. Let's buy that one. Book about pate. In this book, you don't really understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. A book about Without our culture, it promotes something. A book about the future, the government reads your mind using radio technology. Yeah, that's definitely not the one I want. Let's go in here. <laughs> Can't put more points in the skill. Do stuff. Ooh, she looks mean. The book collects the national recipes of Arda. They are all about lake trout. Old sports magazines tucked away in dark corners. I don't know if clicking on everything is a good idea or not. I'm doing it anyways, because why not? Like every moment I spend not reading dialogue makes my voice box happy. Shelf of paranormal books. Ah, this must be the science section. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Look through the shelf. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness. What was that? Wholeness, unity, balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the books, and many others on this shelf, is to give people med medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Uh-oh. Uh, how does that work? It serves platitudes while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to, and which costs more than in this book, is garbage and would only give you cancer anyways without even curing your cold or anything. Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything, though it is important to note that it's a whole bunch of bullshit. When it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because your mind that you're ill in the first place. Does the book say anything else? The book features chapters on topics says how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. And... There's even a chapter on the ancient Sir God fucking know. So he says so that a tradition of using duck gallbladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. Oh, this is just mundane garbage. What's even paranatural about this? Find something truly otherworldly. 92%. The throbbing in your head increases with every passing moment you gaze at this shelf. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a small green book becomes apparent. The title of it reads, Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. Hmm. The book contains very little explanation on the matter. This knowledge seems to be taken for granted. What's this book about? The book contains descriptions of various pseudoscientific therapies, alternative medicines, and folk remedies involving the pale, also known as le territoire. Le territoire. Le, 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 le terrorist. Let's go with that. Oh yeah, this game's got overwhelming positive reviews. For example, it recommends vigorously swatting one's naked body with venique or hand broom made from the leafy twigs of young birch trees from the near pale. Sounds invigorating. It is. And good for the circulation, too. What else? 
It also recommends consuming distilled spirits like vodka or whiskey that have been aged in the pail. Readers are instructed to cover these jars in a shallow hole just inside the pail and leave them there for 30 to 60 days depending on the potency desired. And what does this pale aged liquid do? Among other beliefs, it is alleged to restore a damaged liver to perfect health. That seems improbable. I'm with my logistical side. 